Snestruck. Hi there, today let's take a look at every Super Nintendo tennis game ever made. Much like boxing, there's only about 10 games here, so this shouldn't take too long. Just bear in mind, when I'm talking about hit detection with these games, I'm referring to the ball and the racket, that's all. Let's start with Ace O Nere for Super Famicom. This game is actually really impressive. The controls are tight and the hitbox to hit the ball is very forgiving. The pace of play isn't too fast or too slow. The only real flaw here is this floaty viewpoint that seriously makes me start to feel seasick. Maybe that's just me, but the camera takes some getting used to. Here. Aso Nare is very good, but it takes a long while to get good at. The computer is frustrating to play against because it seemingly never makes a mistake. Still, if you're into tennis, this game is worth checking out. Andre Agassi Tennis is the first of a few player licensed games you'll see here, and this game just isn't particularly good. The controls are very slippery, the hit detection is really finicky, and even if you do hit the ball, it's really easy to hit it out. Andre Agassi Tennis at least has multiplayer doubles, and you can play as Agassi as well as this guy who looks suspiciously like Tiger Woods with a ponytail. The game looks good, and the locked overhead camera perspective is smart, but this game is just way too hard. I'd skip this one. We got another Super Famicom game here, and our first Japanese player licensed game with Date Kamiko no Virtual Tennis, Kamiko Date being a Japanese professional tennis player. This one's kind of in the same boat as Andre Agassi Tennis. The learning curve here is just too steep, so the game is pretty dang hard. The ball comes at you too quickly, and the lower camera angle does you no favors. The big problem here is that when you switch sides after points, you're stuck way in the back here, and it changes the dynamics of the game entirely, so it almost feels like you switch from playing one game to a completely different one. This game is at least a little more forgiving than the Agassi game, and it does allow you to pick quote-unquote special shots to use, but still, I'd avoid this one, you can find better. David Crane's Amazing Tennis is decent. The balance of speed here between the player movement and the speed the ball travels is well done. The hit detection is also very forgiving, which is nice. You don't have to be spot freaking on with your timing. But as you can see, the exact same problems with the previous game resurface here. The camera is too low, and when you rotate to switch sides, you're stuck way in the back and it changes the game dynamics entirely. That's disappointing because David Crane's Amazing Tennis is better than most on this list, but there's too many annoying flaws here, so it's just decent at best. Final set tennis for Super Famicom is kind of a weird one. The hit detection is almost too forgiving here. I mean, it just looks sloppy. The game plays well though, although there's almost no rhyme or reason to when a ball is hit in or out. It does at least have a near identical overhead camera viewpoint to Super Tennis, and that's a good thing. The physics engine here just feels odd, and I think that has to do with the different shots you can do. Just so you know, in just about all of these tennis games, you can hit a power shot, a top spin shot, and a lob shot, and this game is just too inconsistent with how each of these shots are handled once you hit them. They could hit their target or they could just fly anywhere. Final set tennis is definitely playable. It's not bad, but it's not all that great either. Next there's International Tennis Tour from Taito, and dear god this game is so slow. The frame rate here is poor, the camera angle is too low so your depth perception is wonky, the ball moves so slowly to how quickly your opponent can move that it's just about impossible to hit any winners. You just keep the ball in play and wait for your opponent to make a mistake. And more than half the time the computer returns your serve with this cheap ass drop shot that just barely crosses the net and it's impossible to return. I'd avoid this game. Now we got Jimmy Connors Pro Tennis Tour, and this is a weird one too. There's an option here for easy controls, so the game itself actually moves you into position, so all you have to do is hit the ball in the direction you want it to go. Serving is also much easier, and I can see why they defaulted the game to this control mode, because controlling manually is kind of a disaster. To serve, you have to hold the swing button down while moving your target around. It moves so quickly that it can be tough to get the hang of. Just keeping the ball in play is a challenge here. Jimmy Connors Pro Tennis Tour is better than most athlete licensed stuff, but you're your mileage may vary here, it depends on if the computer control here bothers you or not. It kinda bothered me, because well, I don't need it in other games, so I shouldn't need my handheld here either, it almost feels like an apology for bad controls, oh well. It is worth mentioning though that this game is 4 player compatible as well, so that's pretty cool. Smash Tennis only came out in Japan and in PAL regions, and that's a real shame because this is one of the best games on this list. I'll admit the feel of this game can be a bit tough to grasp at first because everything moves pretty dang fast, but the fixed overhead camera allows you to see everything, and the physics engine here is consistent and reliable. You always feel like you're in control, you're playing the game rather than the game playing you, in other words. The odd settings like the beach here also make for a nice change of pace. Smash Tennis is also 4 player compatible, a great feature of course, but the fact that the game is so approachable and accessible makes it that much better.
Super Final Match Tennis is another Super Famicom game, another game that's four player compatible as well, and it's really well made. It's great looking, the sound is well done, there's a lot of options like four player doubles, tournaments, all that stuff. The hit detection is fine, but there's one big flaw, it is way too fast. The ball just zips around the screen and your player is just too slow to keep up. It's a big time imbalance that kind of mars an otherwise fine game. If you can get the hang of this one, you've earned it because it's really hard. Last, we'll finish with the best tennis game on the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom with Super Tennis. This game gets everything right. The camera viewpoint is perfect. The physics engine is always consistent here so you can plan your shots and execute them just the way you want them to. And the ball behaves the way it's supposed to every time. They even got the sound perfect here too. I will say it does take some practice to get good at this game. I'd recommend starting with a power player like John so you can just pound the shit out of the ball from the baseline. Or you can pick a quicker guy like Rich and charge the net for a volley. Really, there's a lot of options here. And Super Tennis is great at allowing the player to choose their own style of play. The only thing here is that it maxes out at two players. No four player multi-tap here. And those passwords, oh my god. But otherwise, you're not going to get a better tennis game on the Super Nintendo than Super Tennis. So yeah, that's every tennis game on the SNES, and my obvious pick for the best game is Super Tennis, but don't sleep on Smash Tennis either. That one's a nice change of pace, and the four-player option is fantastic. If you want something more obscure, then there's Aso Nare and Super Final Match Tennis, although those games aren't without their flaws. Anyway, thank you for watching, and have a great rest of your day.